What's up, my Fina loves? It's Miss Fina D, and you're watching Fina Tame a Filter. To stop, frankly, harassing um, or like calling out other people from my season because I knew that this feeling was something that they were feeling immediately. So, you know, regardless of what my actual relationships are with the people from my show, um, I just don't want people to have to open up their phones all the time and just feel this feeling all the time, which is what I knew they were going through. So that's why I was very adamant coming off my show being like, leave them alone. Just like, just like, I'll hear their apologies, but like get off their backs. So yeah, you've not changed since college. I love you. I have no idea who you are saying that, but thank you. <laughs> Always be myself. Thank you for the badge, Carol. Now, what was the other show that you asked me about? I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. How did I feel about Survivor? Um, I've only seen one episode. So, <laughs> Taryn asked me to hop on a podcast and uh, review the season. And I told him I will get dragged for my opinions because I don't know <laughs> about Survivor. It's The game, I think like the, the mechanics of the game are a little bit different from Big Brother. Um, what earns you respect in the game is also different. I remember watching the Survivor finale that just happened when they were all fighting to make fire or whatever. And I was like, why are they all begging to do something that's going to get them? Like, they could get eliminated. That's like begging to go on the block on the Big Brother house. So why would you beg to make fire if you can get eliminated? They're like, we want to build our resume. And I was like, building your resume is not having to compete dummy so anyway i'd be oh my god you all would hate me you all would hate me if i were doing an episode of survivor that's actually a really good take like i think you'd really be good <laughs> i said taryn do not do not put me through that um okay so you were confused about it too okay thank you so yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll jump on, but still, I feel like all of my survivor takes are going to be very bad. But um, I know Claire. Claire and I have our cute little matching bracelets. I love her. I wish I could have watched Big Brother the way that Claire is watching Survivor and like reacting and having all that fun stuff. But you know, and it, like it's still very interesting because I still I'm seeing new things. I'm seeing new edits and clips and takes and discourse from when I was on my season. And oh my god, I still get DMs. Like, I'll like something randomly on Twitter because it'll pop up in my feed. And then my DMs get flooded with people being like, let go of your season, let go of Big Brother, and move on. And I'm like, I'm just seeing it for the first time. Relax. <laughs> Sorry, but I never heard of you. Well, welcome to the live. I don't know how you found it, but Jumbo, I'm glad you're here. Miss Tara Lynn, hey baby, how are you? Do you have lots of pressure from feeling like you have to keep up and what you do next? Um, mom, 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 mom. I don't think it's pressure from outside people. I think it's more pressure from on myself. Like, I, and I want to be very clear when I say this, this is no shade to people who go on reality shows over and over again. I have never wanted to be a career reality show person. Um, I'll say it like not in a competition reality show. So I could see myself being on like, I don't know, The Housewives or Vanderpump Rules if I were to be on reality TV ever again. But I couldn't see myself going back into competition reality shows. Like I couldn't see myself doing multiple seasons of Big Brother. I couldn't see myself do couldn't see myself doing multiple seasons of Survivor, The Challenge, uh, uh, whatever other competition shows. That's just not something that I really want for myself, especially considering now I'm feeling like it's one thing to know about the stress and the trauma that can come from being on a competition reality show, but then to feel it in the way that I'm feeling it now, which is different from the way that I felt when I was on the show. Um, it's just not something I want to put myself through again. And it's not something I ever saw myself doing. So, yeah, I feel like I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to do something outside of 
uh, competition reality because it's just not something I want for myself. So yeah, I put pressure on myself because I want to succeed, but you know, from pressure comes diamonds. <laughs> I'd love to see you on Family Feud. I would love to be on Family Feud too. I would crush Fast Money. I'm always very good at Fast Money. And I, whenever Fast Money happens, I make sure that I answer the question first and I turn away from the screen on Family Feud so I can answer it in real time. <laughs> Oh my god. Would you ever start a clothing brand? Um, never say never. I don't know if a clothing brand is really for me. But do you feel like your hair is trying to pigeonhole you to 15 minutes? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's such a... I feel like if people don't try to pursue something bigger than... The life that, look, if you get an opportunity to elevate your life after being on a public platform like this, then I will never hold someone, hold that against someone for trying to pursue that. Um, Now, do I think that there's a way to do it that is genuine to your wants, needs, and desires? And do I think there is a way to do it where you are really just trying to take advantage in a bad way of all the people who are around you? Yes. So I do my best to just focus on what aligns with my goals and my desires that honestly I've always had. Um, Like I've always wanted to pursue entertainment news before I was a stylist, before I went to college. Entertainment news is something that I adored. So that because it's true to me, because it's genuine to me, like it just makes sense for me to fully pursue the things. And if people who don't like me want to be like, your 15 minutes is up. It's like, well, first of all, no. (laughs) Uh, First of all, no. And second of all, why, why are we so obsessed with shaming people for just trying to be trying to better themselves it doesn't make sense to me (laughs) not 15 minutes away (laughs) let's look at these questions feelings on scandal it is the one and only team ariana period that's it that is it. I like that you don't dim your light. I never have. <laughs> Many of you are asking questions that are answered in subscriptions, so subscribe if you're that interested. You know, I... Uh, here are my thoughts on that. I am never going to shame people for not wanting to pay four ninety nine a month to... Um, have more exclusive access to my life but there are just some parts of my life that I feel more comfortable putting behind a paywall because it's gotten really there are parts where it's gotten really unbearable can your upper lip touch your nose maybe with this filter I don't know (laughs) maybe um so yeah there's it's interesting because sometimes when I'll promote subscriptions People will respond and be like, I like you, but I don't $4.99 like you. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That's fair. Like, of all the things that you have to pay for these days, between like, <laughs> I mean, to go and read articles on Cosmo.com, like, you have to subscribe. To watch your local news or read your local journalism, you have to subscribe. Your coffee is expensive. There's inflation. Like, oh no. Thank you for telling me that. Ugh. No, not that. Okay. Um. Yeah. Look, of course, there's just going to be more things that you have access to in subscriptions. But I'm not going to try to make people feel bad for not wanting to subscribe. That's just no biggie. January Hothead said you got my $4.99 for life. Okay. Okay. (laughs) 
we have fun over on subscriptions and it's definitely like a safer space for me it's a safer space for the people who do subscribe uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to continue to create or provide some really awesome stuff um, and I guess since we're here we'll talk about it if you do want to subscribe then um, I do daily journals over there so every day I try to do maybe like a paragraph or two about my thoughts on the day, my thoughts on life, what's happening. I'll put some exclusive photo or video on there to kind of narrate what's happening in my day. And if you're interested, then you can engage. And if you're not, no biggie. I'm still here. I'm still here in the public. Y'all do be cutting up over there. Um, somebody asked a good question. How do you feel about this drag queen ban? I'm disgusted by it. I'm disgusted by it. I hate it. Um, it's the beginning of continued attacks, not just on the trans community who are the most vulnerable amongst us. It is the beginning of an attack on established gay marriage rights. I, when you start attacking the most vulnerable among us, that is opening up the door to attack some of the least vulnerable or the people who just now got their rights established. So... Yes, as Tennessee is trying to ban drag performers, which, okay, so what's going on with, like, Medea? Let's talk about that. Like, at what point are we truly going to ban this, and what point is it homophobia? Because we all know it's homophobia. We all know it's transphobia. Please sit down. So, when you have that, <laughs> um, then you have Tennessee that is going to take that and try to build momentum up off of that. And, like, Tennessee now is trying to repeal gay marriage. It just, it's infuriating. It makes me so angry. That's an interesting comment. It's crazy how much you stand up for trans women more than you ever stood up I swiped out by mistake. Um, but, first of all, that is categorically wrong. If you watched my finale speech, that is a very clear... Uh, way that I stood up for women. I actively tried to stand up and protect women when I was playing a game. Um, and currently, I continue to defend women. And women also includes trans women, period. So, yeah, everyone go report and block that person because that's categorically false and transphobic. And we all stand for transphobia over here. Eric, my love, welcome. Everybody say congratulations to Eric. I am so... So happy for you. Eric just had twins, twin baby girls. They were born premature. Um, so they are, are they still in NICU, love? But just send love to Eric and his husband. Send love to Eric's family. I have nothing but amazing things to say. And that is why I talk so much about queer people, trans people, marriage rights, performance rights of drag people in public because there are real people who get impacted and affected by these laws. Still in the NICU and will be for a bit more. Well, I hope they are doing well. I hope they're growing every day. So yeah, there are real people with real lives who are affected by things like this. It's not just people lip syncing. It's not just men putting on makeup and lip syncing in public. Like these are real laws that hurt real people, real good people. And Eric lives in Texas where I'm sure there are continued laws that will try to attack people. Eric gets messages from prominent people saying that him living with his husband and bringing beautiful twin girls into this world is a bad thing. And it makes me sick because they don't deserve that type of noise. They don't deserve that type of attacks. So I will always do everything that I can to stand up for all minority communities, which includes women, the queer community, non-binary people. Send me pics. Get some sleep. Why are you in my chat? Get some sleep, Eric. I know you are working. <laughs> you got the babies. Get out of here. Go get some sleep. <laughs> uh Anyway, I could talk about this forever. So, would you ever go on the traitors? <laughs> oh, man. I, 
I will just say that um, I am asked not just by fans to go on different TV shows often. So, you know, I've got my two-year contract with CBS, um, but there are people at other networks that like to ask what I'm up to. Never say never. That's kind of where I am. Never say never. Ooh, ow, I was just holding my phone so tight. I just ended a work call early because I saw you were live. Girl, well, I hope you at least got some money. Are you doing anything in LA you can talk about? About how long are you there? I leave Saturday night. It's a really quick turnaround. Um, I had some meetings with a lot of different people. I'm meeting up with a handful of people I've just been like dying to meet. Jesse and I are going to try to see if we can link up to do dinner or lunch or something. Um, I was supposed to see... Um, I was supposed to see like three or four people yesterday, but when my phone died <laughs> and the tequila hit, I wasn't seeing anybody else, which bummed me out. No Oscar parties. I'm going to one Oscar event, uh, but I'm not going to any of the parties, so no. Go on all the shows, get your SAG card. I got my SAG card. I got that. This is actually a really funny story. So as soon as I got out the house, um, the next morning I was on the talk. And then later that week I was on, we were filming The Young and the Restless. No, not The Young and the Restless. Bold and Beautiful. Uh, and because... First of all, I still get, I get residual checks from Bold and the Beautiful. I said I was going to keep this live short. It is not short anymore. So, so first of all, I get residual checks from Bold and Beautiful, which is wild. And they're like, those are some good che- They're good checks. <laughs> so that shocked me. And uh, as soon as I did the talk, so the morning after I won Big Brother, I go on the talk and Omarosa is in my DMs saying you need to make sure that you get your SAG card because you were on the talk. And I was like, what are you talking about? How am I going to get, uh, like, it was a talk show. How do I get a SAG card from being on the talk? But I, I got that offer immediately, like a month. No, it was less than a month. <clears throat> I think it came less than a month once I got there. But I was still living in L.A., like, at Todrick's house. Um... So now I joined, I, I got my little card. I'm a union member. <laughs> so yeah, that was, yes. <laughs> so, Omarosa, that's how I felt. I was like, what's Omarosa doing in my DMs? What's Omarosa doing, giving me advice? But no, she was really sweet. I think I, you get surprised by a lot of people. Um, but yeah, that was, that was something that kind of surprised me. Not Omarosa in the DMs, quickly, with the quickness. And she, you know, she gives very good advice. I will say that. Um, yeah, so shout out to Omarosa. I didn't know what to expect. There are a lot of people you just never know what to expect from. And, like, I've been very, very surprised by a lot of people that I've met. Would you ever act on a soap opera? Ugh, in a heartbeat. If they gave me, like, a five-episode arc on... Um, Young and Restless, Bold and Beautiful. I would do it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Yes, Monique. She's very, very nice and very, very smart. Like, she's very... Omar Rose is very smart. So, yeah. Are you a good actress? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we will see. Any recommendations for the open casting? Ooh, okay. Uh, first of all, if you're going to open casting, if you're thinking about going to open casting, just go. Just go and show up. Um, I would 100% recommend that you go in person. Sometimes you just get a better vibe of the people around you. For me, it's kind of like the more I see how the open casting works in person, the more it feels exactly like a pageant interview. You walk up. And you are talking in a group of people. You are speaking to a panel of people. And you only have this much time to really get your person, your personality to resonate with the panel. So, 
the biggest thing that I will tell you, it is not pick a character and then lean into your archetype. No. Because I think it was very clear that my archetype was supposed to be like the bitch or the snooty girl or whatever. Which like, uh, I kind of am snooty, but I own it. Um, but I also was very self-aware. <laughs> Shock. Very, very cognizant that that is a perception that people have about me. But I was also very honest about all of the layers um, that are part of me. So my biggest piece of advice when I tell you to go to the open casting is to tell visual descriptive stories. I want to feel... If you're telling me a story about you being in a car, going down a freeway. I wanna know what song was on the radio. I wanna know what it felt like when the wind was in your hair. Did you feel it on your scalp? Was the, did you have lip gloss on? Was your hair smacking against and sticking to the lip gloss on your lips? Was it raining? Could you feel droplets of rain smacking your face? Were people screaming in the back? Were you going crazy just trying to figure out the directions while people are yelling in the back? Like, what is going on? I want to know, I want to feel like I am in that moment with you. That, when I told stories like that, when I made people in casting feel, (coughs) excuse me, like they were part of the story. Like they were right there next to me in the story. Like they felt like they were in the movie in, um, what was it, IMAX with the seat? You guys remember the seat that would like vibrate or like the sound was right there where like you would feel what's happening in the movie. You need to make the people in casting feel like they are right there with you. So tell a story, but make sure people feel like they're part of a story. And that's really what's going to get you far. That's what's going to get you very, very far in the casting process. I think that's probably the biggest, um, biggest advice that I have. Because, like, I could really be like, oh, be yourself. Okay, and? <laughs> like, it's just lame. So if you're doing those castings, oh, no, I'm, I feel like I'm joking. Oh. There we go. Oh. <laughs> and we're back. That is my advice for you. Taylor, you're going to be on The Amazing Race. If I were going to be on The Amazing Race, I couldn't tell you right now. I can definitely see you on Tyler Perry's sisters. Anyway, so... <laughs> Not you dropped us. I did, and what? <laughs> Have you watched Caught Up with The Bachelor? No. <laughs> but uh okay so the real question is if so any thoughts on the season if not thoughts on the franchise in general i think if they don't seriously um revamp themselves to be a more modern show it's just going to be like a relic that people are kind of like oh that's still on tv oh Taylor, what are you wearing today? I'm wearing sweatpants. Did you see my question? I, what? (laughs) One day I'm just going to read everything that's in the DMs and y'all, I'm not going to be okay. (laughs) I noticed Tony was there. I met Tony. Tony was a sweetheart. I did not know that Tony works with Mayhem Miller. And I did not know that it's club with Mickey's. What? We were just kicking and having a good time last night. I didn't know any of this. I'll give him a call. Would you ever go into casting and join the Big Brother casting team? Uh, again, it's kind of like never say never. Um, I heard the next Bachelor will be a black lead. Her name is Charity from this current season. Good luck to her. <laughs> oh man this might be a dumb question but are you looking forward to the new season of big brother this summer um i think 
do a sub reading of DMs. Ooh, that's a good idea, actually. That that's a really good idea. I think I will. Um, so I actually am excited to watch the new season of Big Brother. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with every episode. I don't know if I'll be a feeder. Um, I would love to come back and do something that Tiffany did, like hosting a competition and giving my opinions in the DR. It still blows my mind. I will never forget this. I remember hitting the button for the DR a bunch of times trying to get in there. And they would hit me with the red button. I was like, why won't you let me in? And it's because Tiffany was in there the whole time. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited to do that. It'll be really fun. Why don't you and Michael do your own podcast or be Big Brother 25? Because Michael's getting married. Michael has a wedding to plan. <laughs> Joker's updates column. I don't know what that is. Just watch Taryn's live feed updates every morning. I probably will. So, yeah, that'll be exciting. I'll definitely, like, pop in. I don't think... I'll be very honest with you. I think if I didn't win the show, I don't... Do you ever answer yes or no? Your answers are too long. No, I'm long-winded. Always have been. <laughs> I think if I didn't end up winning the show, I would not... I would not talk about Big Brother. I would not engage in the show. I wouldn't really, like, be involved. But because I won the show, I will always be tied to the history of this game because I made history in the game. Um, so yeah, I don't ever see myself fully removing myself from the Big Brother universe. <laughs> but like, it's Marvel. Um, so yeah, I, you know, no matter how big I get, or even if I just stay as big as I am right now, I, I'll definitely still engage. So I'm looking forward to like playing that role and being, yeah, I would, I'll, definitely do Taryn's podcast. I'll definitely have my comments here and there, but I don't really think that I'll be like in it, in it. <clears throat> don't believe the Twitter takes. They're very emotional. I don't dive too deep into Twitter these days anymore. I'd rather just live in the real world. All that time that I spent, um, on it's kind of like it's a double-edged sword because or no, it's really just two hands. So on one hand, I want to see all the reactions and everything's happening, but like the discourse now I'm just not really interested in because I'm not on the show. I think I'm always going to be in the conversation just again because of the way that I won the show, my experience on the show. Um, and even like with Canada removing the live feeds, I'm, my name popped up in conversation because we would not have known... <laughs> truly what was happening to me if the live feeds weren't around. So yeah, I'm really concerned about, I hope that's not a trend. I don't think CBS would ever take away live feeds, but yeah. Thoughts on the Julie Chen religious fever? Oh, let people be religious. As long as they aren't hurting people, let people do you. Would you consider writing a book about your life? If I got a book deal, I'm sure I would take it. <laughs> Some of these questions are phrased so funnily. Like, okay, to be honest, you very beautiful queen, I love you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Would you ever post a Sports Illustrated swim? I would. I, um, I almost submitted this past year, but I chickened out. <laughs> so maybe I'll submit this for 2024, but for 20. 23 for this year's submissions i like almost did it and then i was like i i don't know i chickened out it'd be like that sometimes <clears throat> paramount won't take away live feeds that's how they make money during the summer when big brother's on <laughs> i did see that article talking about how we were most streamed um how we beat out uh stranger things now like okay content wise there's a lot more content to stream compared to Str stranger things but you know i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> you look more you look like you wait what you look like you love taylor wait no i have to answer this one because this is some bs you do look like you love taylor swift more than beyonce that is bait <laughs> no
Big up Jamaica. Shout out Jamaica. <laughs> All right. I have to go watch some reality. <coughs> not this, not this, not my throat being dry. I have to go watch some reality TV. And then I have, I have like a, I'm going to a place called, <coughs> excuse me. It's um, the Tox LA. So I'm going to go there and do like a detox. They have like a special massage and lymphatic drain. So I'm excited to give that a shot. So I will let you all know how it goes. But in the meantime, I'm going to pop on Farmer Wants a Wife, Vanderpump Rules, and Survivor. So I got about three hours of TV. So 10, 11, 12, 12, 12. Okay, I should be good. All right. Goodbye. Love y'all. Be kind. Not nice. Be kind. I appreciate Taylor's efforts talking about, you know, telling some of her supporters to basically, you know, leave people alone, don't, you know, be kind, don't bully people and all of that. But after saying it, you know, so many times, there's only so much you can do. As long as you know that you did your part, you know, then it is what it is. I have the image of Taylor and Joseph on the screen because, yes, I do have all of the footage and images from their trip to Canada. I know I'm behind, but thank you all for your patience. And so I will be using an older outro. So all of the images you're about to see of Taylor and Joseph, you've seen them before, but I will absolutely be back with new content. I just had to put up this Instagram live for my people who are not on social media. I always promise to post the Instagram lives, especially if it's free for all of you. So I was just keeping my promise, but I'll be back with the more detailed posting from her trip to Canada with Joseph and Caché and all of them. I wish all of you well and take care. Thank you all for your love and support. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up. Also turn on notifications so when I do post you where they're posted and I will see you all in the comment section. Remember to always have the God bless attitude which is being positive at all times and seeing the good in every situation. Have a great day guys. God bless. <laughs>